Madam Chair, before beginning, I would like to, how to put this? We've seen a trend then over the last couple of months, even from the last budget debate where we were um, threatened basically to approve it or else, and if this, the Holland say jump, we say how high. Now, Madam Chair, I would like to bring um, attention to the following points to the minister, and these are conditions that I am now bringing on behalf of the people of St. Martin. Um, the first one being that the government actually gave a, a plan of approach, a clear plan of approach on how they plan to deal with the post office workers, that the government, through you, Madam Chair, that the government hires a dedicated IT staff, IT person then, or team to deal with the tax situation, and also give a three-month plan on how they plan to deal with it. That the government establish a dedicated calibration department within the Ministry of Economic Affairs so that um, our consumers and our businesses can stop being ripped off. That the government gives a clear indication, so not that um, the function book is in the final stages, a clear indication, a date, a clear cut date as to when the, the finalization of this will take place. That the government actually, well, the Minister of TIAT gives the, the fine books, or whether in collaboration with the Minister of Justice, get the fine books for the, the controller so that they can be able to do their task because a few months ago, I think it was in October or November, I can't remember because the meetings keep getting dragged on, we were told that the fine books would be ready by December 1st. Um, we are now in March, almost April 1st, and there's, everyone is mum about it. That the government gives Parliament a three-month plan as to how they plan to tackle the roof, the roof repair situation because we've heard several ministers, even including the Minister of Romney, say that we only have the government has only completed seven roofs. So I don't want to hear about what um, St. Martin Development Fund did, White Yellow Cross or Red Cross. I would like to know how much money the government is planning to put in this for 2019 and also how much money the government is putting into the Mental Health Foundation because we see that the director and staff and everyone is basically crying out for assistance. Um, this is a problem that affects everybody. And I believe, and I would like for the Minister of Finance to indicate how much they plan to put into this um, organization. And also, my last condition from the people of St. Martin is that a plan of approach for the shelters. Madam Chair, we, after um, a lot of back and forth, I requested to get a tour of the hurricane shelters. We got a tour in October. We were told that um, water tanks that could hold um, 10,000 liters of water will be put on the ground, um, a 16 kVA generator, a diesel tank with 100 liters. These are different things that was given to us during the tour. I would like to know what, what's, what's up with these plans because I heard the Minister of Versa mention something totally different in CALM a couple of weeks ago. So I would like to know what is the plan for the upcoming hurricane season because last year, I asked the same questions and basically we were not ready. Here we are, a few months shy of the next hurricane season. We're not ready. We can keep our fingers crossed and, and give thanks that we were spared last year, but what is the plan? Are we going to continue to wait and see what will happen? I would like to know from the Minister of Finance or the Ministry responsible. I also have um, here the Basilis Balat from the Ministerat where they, on reference 25, they say freeze new vacancies except for critical ones. I would like to know what are all the critical vacancies right now within the, the government, so per ministries, a clear cut um, explanation on what are the critical vacancies and the statuses thereof. And also 26 said freeze hiring of consultants unless approved. I would like to know how much consultants were hired from within the last year, let's say 2018 to, and, and up to now. And here I would like to go on with um, the questions that I have so far. I would like to know from the minister to you, Madam Chair, what is the current status of the rent committee? 
So what is their function exactly, and what is the current status? Are they functioning? And how much does government subsidize them, if government subsidize them? I would like to know, through you, Madam Chair, what, are the, what is the status of all the sports facilities throughout the DOT site? So Raul Elage, the Melford Hazel Sports Facility, the Elby Scott Sports Auditorium, what is the condition? And how much money does the government plan to put into these sports facilities? Because as we know, sports is very important for the development of our youth. I saw some different programs that started recently. I would like to know how much is being put into the sports facilities. Madam Chair, lady, through you, I would like to know how much money did the government spend this year on Carnival? I would like to know how much money they spent on the recently held music festival. And I would also like to know how much money they spent on the Heineken Regatta. I'm asking all this because um, I know that these um, events are very important to generate revenue for the country and boost our um, tourism product. But I also believe it's very important to take care of our social ills that we have. And I go back to the roofs. So I would also like to know how much money has the government spent on roofs? So the government, not the White and Yellow Cross, not the NDP, the government of Sri It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NV. Um, four bands on the road, no incidents. We're just reaching the border. I would like to say thank you to the F D F C D S M. Okay, um, we have always tried to work together as much as we can. We come to support theirs, yes. they come to support ours. And Unity Jump Up is one of those jump ups that we both can work together because they have to do some things for it to work, and we have to do some things for it to work. It has worked, we're having a great time. Now we cross into the south side. And I would like to thank the French authorities as well, the municipal police and the FCDSM and the gendarmes, of and the gendarmes yes. for assisting.
and really getting us to where we is. I always say, Swaligo don't have no border, so Carnival can't have no border. We just have our next one. So we came over, and now they're coming over, and we're going all the way, right? Yes, we're definitely going all the way. All the way to, to Phillipsburg. All the way to Phillipsburg, yes. and then to Carnival 50. So, all right, let's thank hear you so much. from the president of the French side. Well, first of all, we'd like to um, thank all those who assisted in making this Unity Jump Up um, happen. After six years, I believe it was six the last years, time, was yeah. 2012, I think, that we attempted to, to organize it. So it's an honor for me to, as president, you know, to be part of this event this joint event which showcase of course unity between the two the two sides of the island i um, want to congratulate of course scdf for carnival 50. i am looking forward to it i believe i think everyone is definitely looking forward to it and i'm wishing them much success of course for carnival 50. definitely, definitely. Right, some closing remarks come experience life come experience 50 years of life come experience unity you know we're here and we're all having a good time shout out to all the volunteers on the SCDF side and the FCDSM side as well. We do it for the love of Carnival and it shows when everybody comes out like this and we have a great time. Just for the viewers that don't know, how the exchange is going to be done? It's going to be by a shake hand or...? We ain't even figure it out yet. <laughs> but we're going to pass the energy cross. Don't worry about that. <laughs> well, we might have a little plaque or something. If you don't do it, then do it now that I got we're you on camera. We're going to do it just we waiting for the first truck because we want okay. to actually say it on the microphone. Oh, okay. So more people can hear what's going on. Okay. But we'll have a little exchange. It's, you know, two young presidents, first time we're doing it. So right. we're going we, we, we go to figure it out we're as we get there. We're going to figure it out, definitely. Right, definitely. Right, good, yeah, good. Yeah. Good night, Hey ma, how you doing? You busy? I here, just paying some bills. 
taking care of business, you know what it is. <laughs> I know, you're doing your online banking. I don't have to stand in those long lines to pay bills. I can transfer when I want. I can check my account wherever. It's like the bank open 24 seven. I even hear checking the statement right now as we're talking. How's Miami? Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm finishing up a few songs now, but I'm afraid that studio time might be more than I thought. And I was wondering if I could get some help with some funds and I could pay you back as soon as I get back to St. Martin. Let me check my account. How much you need? I think 500 should be enough. I can transfer it to you while you're online. Direct from me to you. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, ma. I'll get online with Bib now. All right, darling. You know who you're for. <laughs> I need to know who you're for. Contact Web today for your complete personal online banking experience. Available for all mobile devices, the Winwood Islands Bank, now your online banking partner in progress. Ça va bien. Ah, vous nous faites plaisir. Nous pas même envie bâti. Levez la main, 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 levez la main. Pas bêté, pas bêté, pas bêté, pas bêté, mais. Ah, 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 ça va chauffer. Est-ce que vous êtes content? Joli, ça se casse. Number one. Show. C'est parti. I gotta thank the people them for supporting it makers for seven years. Without the people, there's no hit makers because without them there's no dance floor. It's only gonna be vinyl and tile, you know. So we have Castle celebrating 40 years, Crossfire celebrating 30 years, St. Martin Carnival celebrating 50 years. So we got 30, 40, 50. We have Boleria straight out of Aruba. For those who do not know, Bulleria won the Tumba King with their lead singer Rocco and St. Martin's own Youth Waves Band. So guess what? We have a compact lineup and you know we ain't done there yet. Nikosa! 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 Kosa! 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 you going straight into Juve Morning. That's correct. So you were the one who's going to open up the Juve Morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We start in Juve Morning with fire. All right. So what will be the last band that's going into Juve Morning? Well, Ricardo are still busy shuffling. It's like a domino game. You're shuffling still, and when you pull the deck of cards, 
then we all know what's going on. So we're still playing with it because it's very ticklish. The idea is for us to make sure that it runs smooth like a story and people go smooth out of the village, straight into Juve. But one thing I'm going to tell them, for sure you're going to be sleeping. You're going to be wide awake by the time Juve man in. Yes, big up, Telcel Night of the Hitmakers, April 26th, Festival Village, be there. It's going to be a memorable, memorable event, one for the books, Mr. Rude Sister. Last topic I'd like to touch on is our um, construction sector meet and greet. This happened uh, last evening, actually. The event was well attended. It was hosted um, here in the government building. You had a number of speakers, myself as speaker. We also had um, a Mr. Andrew Boudica from the Inspectorate, and we also had Mr. Claret Connor from the National Recovery Bureau. Um, and there were a number of objectives from the meeting trying to ascertain what exactly is happening with the reconstruction process on the island and what the feedback from the sector is in terms of what are some of the bottlenecks, what are some of the handicaps going forward. And there were a number of points that came out of the, out of the meeting I would like to just update the public about. Number one, we found it was very engaging, happy to hear that the participants engaged, asked questions, so there was a good dialogue back and forth. Um, very happy the NEPA and MIC IT representatives were there last night as well. And it turns out that most of the graduates, over 90% of the graduates from the course that had their graduation just a few weeks ago, have already been absorbed into the working force. So I think that's a very good story. It means that, um, again, if you look at the story, it means that we've taken people who were either unemployed or underemployed as part of the Ministry of VSI's skill training program that's funded by the World Bank, We've allowed people to participate in an educational course that they would have normally had to pay for themselves and find the time to attend themselves. So we've made the resources available for them to be paid to attend the courses, so allows them to maintain, hopefully keep their head above water, and also have health insurance as, as they participate in these training courses. So the great thing is we've given them help to stay afloat. They've gotten skills to make themselves more marketable and they've already been adopt, uh, um, absorbed into the workforce. So I think it's a great story, and we're happy that the second course is already actually fully subscribed, and they're continuing, and I think the anticipated graduation for that class is in August of, of this year. So again, I think the ministry, uh, together with our partners, are doing really great, great things. Um, there was quite a mixed reaction to future prognosis for work. Some of the companies explained that they had contracts, but as these contracts were finishing, being completed. They didn't see new jobs coming on the horizon. There was some concern about some of the um, uh, projected larger projects still not being started as yet. So there's some concern from some sectors. And others feel that on the smaller scale that there's still some level of work, but they are also seeing a slowdown from that side. Um, to our Minister of Romy, one of the points that came across um, rather firmly from the group was that the process of in issuing building permits is delaying the reconstruction process. They feel that there's people who have money, who want to redevelop, 
but they're waiting for building permits. So I think that's something that as government we need to jointly look at how do we stimulate our economy and make sure our reconstruction process is moving. The other issue is funding. A lot of people find that their insurance money that they receive, that they've spent, has been exhausted or their personal savings. And so there's really a capital issue. There's an issue in terms of people finding the financial resources to continue with the reconstruction of their, of their projects. So um, a couple of, of issues in terms of how can we speed up the reconstruction project. Um, there was discussions about the availability of local labor, about productivity and the skill sets that the companies are looking for. So again, it was good that the MIC IT and NEPA were there to look and see what skills we need to ensure that our workforce have in order to be properly placed in the marketplace. And one, one feedback point as well, some of the companies indicated that there's again this perception that applying for work permits is too cumbersome and too difficult. Um, but actually, I think perhaps the ministry we could do more in terms of better identifying what the requirements are when they need to apply for the work permits in terms of what documentation is required. But again, the documentation is the requirements are set out in legislation. So again, as ministry, we're obligated to follow the, the law. But once the permits are submitted and complete, right now the ministry is approving permits between two to four weeks from the time that they're submitted. So I don't see the... I don't see that the government is holding up anything from a work permitting process, right? So again, we encourage, and again, we are seeing it that the companies that are applying for work permits, most of them are issued. So unless there's really some big issues in terms of the applications, we recognize the need for the reconstruction. So most of the permits that once they're properly submitted um, are being approved for the construction sector. So this perception from the industry that getting work permits is difficult um, I don't believe is accurate and I certainly would encourage companies to come in if they're not sure how to do it, come in and speak to one of the, um, one of the workers here. At the